Hopefully uh, today we're going to talk through some things that will um, help benefit you guys, get you out there, getting some shots up, getting a little bit better. So again, um, I want to thank Langston, we want to thank Luke, all the, the people here at Dr. Dish for allowing us to make this happen. Uh, now today, just so you guys know, um, we are going to uh, go through about 15 minutes or so of pure ball handling. We're gonna have Luke, uh, who's an incredible trainer, run through that piece with Langston. Now, just to get a little bit of an idea of what it will look like, Luke is actually going to be on another phone virtually uh, with Langston going through that on their end. Um, what I'm gonna do is try to patch in what they're working on, answer questions for you guys, uh, make sure that we're really focusing on the things that they're doing uh, in the ball handling. With that being said, after about 15 or so minutes, we'll get into our shooting portion um, of the workout. Again, we're gonna work on uh, some different footwork actions, some lateral bounds, getting a lot of shots up. So nothing too crazy, but this is a great workout for um, you know any player uh, at the youth level, high school, and even college and professional level like Langston as well. So really excited to get things rock and rolling. Um, as we get things going here, again, if you have any questions about what we're doing, uh, if we have extra time and there's some things specifically that you want to see, let us know. Uh, we'll try to do as much as we can. Obviously, again, this, this is, um, um, you know, logistically, it's, it's really crazy, but we're trying our best. And then also, too, uh, continue to shout out where you're from. Let people know who you are, where you're from. We'll try to give you guys some shout outs as well. Um, and if there's anything that, you know, again, that you want to know from uh, Langston, myself, or Luke, feel free to ask. At the very end of our training session, so probably after about 30 minutes or so, 35 give or take, uh, we'll sit down with Langston for a few extra minutes and we're going to answer some of the questions that you guys have. So if you have questions that you want to ask him, myself, um, or even Luke, uh, save some of those questions for the end. We'll make sure that we try to get to as many as we can. We'll answer some questions for you guys and, um, you know, again, hopefully you guys learn as much as you can. So, um, with that being said, I know that we're going to patch in links in here. We got him on. You want to text him? Yeah, let me text him really quick. We were just, we were just on with him. <laughs> we're just on with him. We're going to do it again. Again, we're working virtually here, so it's, uh, nothing is going to be perfect. This is what I love about it. We're live. This is what happens in workouts, but let me text him really quick. We got our guy D in the house here. Oh, we got someone tuning in from Baton Rouge. That's where uh, Langston's from. Oh, uh, we're good now, okay. Jefferson. Um, right now, waiting for him. Connecting, and there he is. What's good? Langston, my man, what's up? All right, you got it. Awesome. Well, again, like we said, we're super excited to have you here today. Obviously, um, I talked a little bit about uh, what we're going to do today, uh, the ball handling that you and Luke are going to go through. I know that you're going to try your best to uh, talk a little bit as well on what you're doing and what you guys are working on. Um, again, you mentioned working hard and not being afraid of making mistakes. So uh, anybody out there watching, just understand that's what the game of basketball is about. So we're really excited about the ball handling piece. And then the last 15 minutes or so, we're one lengthening through some really, really uh, cool shooting drills that I think anybody from the youth level all the way up to the professional level can benefit from. So i um, really excited to get it going. And then at the end, again, we're going to answer some questions, sit down with Langston. So, um, you know, without further ado, Langston, I know that you guys on your end virtually are, are going to get rocking and rolling on this ball handling stuff. And, um, you know, everybody stay tuned, ask questions. Nick and I are here. We're going to try to moderate as best as we can. And, and if you're out at your court, uh, feel free to join in and do the, the, the workouts and the drills with Langston. So let's rock and roll. Cool. All right. Let's go on. So we'll start off with um, – uh, we'll go – uh, I'll be rocking the uh, handle ball, the heavyweighted ball, so I can uh, push myself a little bit harder than you guys. So, all right. But hopefully you guys can hear me. Let me know if you can't hear me uh, so I can talk about it for every workout. All right. Ready? All right, so first one is just pound in and out, and right. then it's pound, pound, sway, sway. All right, so we got pound, yeah, so. in and out, sway, pound, in and out, sway, sway. All right, can you? Nah, so, hold on, it's pound, pound, in and out. In and out. Pound, 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 p
down. And slam, slam. Okay, okay, all right, gotcha. Okay, all right, ready? You guys ready? So we got pound, get out, and then we got two pound, 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 and it's way. All right, we'll go, uh, we will go 20 or uh, 30 second loop. All right, we're going 25 seconds, 25 seconds. I don't know if you guys can hear Luke and I in the background, this, uh, everything, all right? All right, here we go. Ready? Go. Now, if you guys are watching, what you'll notice is that he's able to manipulate the basketball in a variety of different ways. So just look at his hand right now on the basketball. See and notice how he has his hand on top of the basketball, at times on the side of the basketball, depending on the move that he's doing. That's very important with ball handling. One more rep. Eight time. All right. All right now, now switch to the other side. Pound, hit it out. Pound, pound, sway. All right. Here we go. Awesome, good. Shoulders down, knees bent, athletic stance. That's a focus right there. Just as important as any other piece of the game of basketball. Say hi to DJ D Ray. Uh, all right, next, next one. Next one. Pound between, between. You're not moving. All right. So we got pound between, between. And then pound, pound between, and then the ball's in your other hand. You're going right back. Okay, so pound between, between. Pound, pound, between, and then we're switching to the other side. So we got pound, between, between, pound, between. All right? Yeah, so, so, so making sure you hesitate going into the next so You go pound, between, between, pound, pound, between, pause, and go into the next Notice again, he's using the heavy basketball, which makes it a little bit more difficult. It's a lot harder to do it with that basketball. So him pushing himself using that heavy basketball is really going to allow him to be more successful when he gets that regular basketball in his hand. Talk to him if you want, or we can keep going. All right, so uh, biggest with the first two is uh, trying to change pace, uh, especially with the heavy trying to change pace, trying to get between your legs as fast as you can, pushing yourself, but also at the same time, too, being able to manipulate and push real fast. All right, so that's the biggest thing to exercise. So, next one, all right, here we go again. So, so I'm gonna let you guys know if you have a water exactly. bottle or cone or something that you have right there. I'm gonna put a bottle on the ground, all right? So move it over to the right side of your right toe. Okay. Perfect. And now we're going north south. This is the one where you go pound behind the water bottle, oh, pound on that shoulder. Can you guys see the water bottle? Back up just a little bit. All right, back up a little bit, all right? There we go. All right, cool. All right, what we got to do? So you just, for 20 seconds, you're going pound behind and then pound in front. Okay, so fine. So you just work on, throw that shoulder back and forth. So working on front to back, front to back. So we're going front of the water bottle, behind the water bottle. So we got front, behind, work, behind. So just working on, just trying to quicken up your speed with your ball handling. At the same time, too, trying to make sure you get the ball to hit the water. All right. So again, the focus on this is manipulating the basketball. If you notice his hand, notice how his hand is moving all around that basketball, bringing it front to back. Now, a lot of people practice dribbling the basketball side to side. It's extremely important to be able to dribble the, the basketball north to south. So this is a perfect drill. It looks a lot easier than what it really is. Again, get your accountability pieces out and work extremely Follow along if you can out there. Okay. Take notes. Uh, all right, switch the sides, switch the sides. Make sure you guys can see. All right, guys, ready? Here we go. Other side. Let's go. Nice. 
nice, good. Notice how he shifts his hips every single time. So he's shifting his hips a little bit side to side, front to back. He's making sure that that hand is able to glide on the basketball. Okay? Playing really loose with that ball allows him to control it a lot better, especially with the heavy ball that he's using. Tom, Tom, Tom. So bring the other one and put it on the other side of you. All right, now we're going to bring in two water balls now. We got two water balls, all right? Like I said, you have a cone. Whatever you have laying around, just pick it up and you can use it, all right? So now you got the same thing, but now so it's pound behind, pound in front, and then it's between. And then at that point, the ball's already behind. So it's behind and front between. Okay. Behind and front between. Behind and front between. So we're going behind and front between. All right, let me make sure, make sure your water ball is spaced out enough. So you got enough space, all right? So you got behind, low, front, between. Behind, front, between. Behind, front, between, okay? All right, get a good, good rhythm. But at the same time, try to change pace, all right? All right, you guys ready? Let's go. This is a great drill that, you know, players can do at home. Obviously, this is limited space, so you're able to do this with or without a basket. So focus on the details of this and the change of pace like Langston talked about. Also focus on how he's manipulating that basketball game. It's very important to be able to control the basketball at every angle around your body. <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom. So, last one of this, same thing, now you're going behind. So the only difference, though, is now your first dribble is going to be in front instead of behind. So okay. if you hear, you go pound, pound, behind, the ball's already going to be behind. So go ahead. We want you to work on that shoulder placement of going forward, then back, and then behind your back. Okay. Forward, right, so, then back, then behind. All right, so, so next one, we're doing behind now. Since we did between, now we're going to go behind. All right, so we're going front to bottom, behind the bottom, behind. And then back, front the bottom, behind the bottom, behind. All right? Get your good rhythm. Like I said, try to push yourself, push yourself. You got ready? Let's go. Try to your speed change. Good. One of the hardest things to, to manage and master is behind the back, even for me personally, myself. Again, making mistakes is perfectly okay. That means you're pushing yourself. Even the best of the best do. If you mess up, that's good. Everything not going to be perfect. Tell them to do any combos. So those are easy combos. Those, drill to do any type of combos you want. So those are two uh, real easy combos you can do between Extending your left foot like you're about to explode, all right? But yeah, go two pounds. Um, throwing that shoulder with your foot. Okay, so two pounds. And, and it actually go like you're about to explode. So you're trying to sail like, you're, like, like it's a move. Instead, don't come around. All right? You guys ready? All right, let's go. Sweet. Look at the change of pace. Selling the downhill every single time. That's important. Selling the downhill so that you can get your defender leaning every time. Reset. Get back to your footwork. And maintain balance the entire time. Tom, 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 Tom. Good, good, good. All right. Now we, whatever we do with the right hand, we got to do with the left hand. All right. Keep working with that heavy ball, man. I know it ain't easy. Ain't easy. Ain't easy, but it's, hey, it's going to be beneficial later on. Yes, sir. Let's go. For a great shooter like Langston, this is incredible action because, again, people are going to be playing him tight. So when he sells a downhill, they're going to back up a little bit. 
uh, just because they're so close to him because he's a great shooter. But this will give him an opportunity, obviously, to get the space that he needs to knock down the jump shot. So now we only got two more. All right, two more left. We got two more exercises, and then we'll get in the jump shots, all right? I know that's what everybody, that's what everybody wants to do, right? A little, a little, little jump shot, but hey, ball hands apart everything. So, like, start a little farther back, maybe. You're just going to take up one or two dribbles, and then you're attacking right to that little behind the back pullback. And then you just walk back, and then now you're going to your left. And then right. walk to the back, and then so. All right, right so this, this one would be like kind of simulation. Uh, working on an explosion dribble out behind the back, so you bring it back. Explode, bring it back, and walk it back. Same thing on the other side. Town, bring it back, walk it back. So you're trying to anticipate the defender, trying to cut you off real fast, and trying to bring it back real fast so that way you can try to explode to the next direction. All off of the acting, so you can be able to read and react real fast. Okay, look. All right, you got it. Good. Keep it like this so I can see it. Good, good. This is great because this is what we're going to work on with our shooting. A lot of downhill action. Nice exchanges behind the back. Perfect. it up with that one. You go behind the back, you can go reverse uh, between the legs, you got a lot of confidence in your dribble, you do it in front, cross, mix it up, mix it up, work on that. Okay, so last one, we're actually going to go one. between, so you got the two options, so you can go ball side foot, where it's like that little pullback, where you're here and you're attacking and it's like the yank, okay. or you can that crossover step, like here and then you're right back. Okay. And then you're and then you're right back. So, or it can be right there. So a go-to move I love doing is all step. So basically kind of see it. Basically taking a step, bring it back real fast. Oh, it's about to explode. Back real fast in between the legs. For me, uh, I love being able to go between behind the back, uh, those are kind of like my go-to in my. Now, I haven't really done that many crossovers in my career as of yet. So still got work to do. Still got work to do. Hey, we get that. Last thing, last thing, last thing we got. You guys want to finish up? Going right and going right. Let's finish up. Let's go. So a lot of you people out there are asking how long is Linkson doing these. He's doing for about 25 to 30 seconds, pushing himself with the heavy ball. If you're out there, I would challenge you to go around the same amount of time, 30 seconds. If you really want to kill yourself and really go super hard, try to go for 45 seconds to a minute. All right, so each one of these are minute reps. Um, Links is going for about 30 with the heavy ball, which makes it a little bit more difficult. How you feeling, man? Let you go, man. That was a, that was a great warm-up right there. That's just a warm-up, y'all. Just a warm-up. All right, so what we're going to do, I uh, appreciate Luke. All right, kind of getting this rock and rolling. Langston, we're going to talk through a little bit of shooting, okay? So um, the first thing that I like to do with shooting with all my players is make sure that they get warmed up. So Langston, you can get the machine set up. What we're going to focus on is just catch and shoot from the top of the key. Now within this, we're going to work on our different footwork, okay? So Langston's probably at this level in his career very, very familiar with the different footworks that he wants to work on, whether that's a one-two left-right step, okay? So he has an option to go left-right into a shot. He can kind of hop into a shot. Sometimes coming off the screen, he might go right-left into a shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to get straight with the Dr. Vince shooting machine. He's going to have passes fired straight out, and he's going to knock down 10 shots, okay? So, Langston, I want you to set up the machine, and we're going to get warmed up making some shots. So, we're going to make 10 to 15, and then we'll get into the next one. Let's rock and roll. All right, let's get it. Guys, if you have a machine or a rebounder, you want to try to pace yourself maybe um, on this catch and shoot. 
three, four, five seconds in between, okay? So he wants to be able to shoot the basketball with good form, be able to get back to his location in his spot, reset his footwork, and then get into it. Again, if it's a one-two step, we want to be able to do that. If it's a top step, we want to be able to get into that accurately. Now, there's a lot of coaches that preach one way is better than the other. If you watch all NBA players, they shoot with different footwork, okay? So, again, as you can see, he's going to catch the basketball every single time from the machine, step in, one-two shot, okay? So, obviously, for him, it's going to be backwards. He's right-handed because he has a camera. But notice how he's stepping in left-right, okay? If you're left-handed, it might be right-left. So, he's going to step in consistently every single time, knock down 10 to 15. If you're a great shooter, we might want to knock down 15 to 20 or 20 to 30, if you're just starting as a basketball player, maybe you want to make five shots as well, okay? So notice again, his hands ready every single time. Same form, make or miss. Knocking down jump shots, good. One, two, consistency. The great thing about the machine is it's going to continue to fire out passes, fire out passes until he makes it. And again, if he chooses to, he can set up the different goals on there as well to knock down all the different shots. Okay, so Lane, what we're going to do next is this, okay? So one thing that I love focus on with my players is getting the defender moving laterally. So Nick's going to flip the camera. I'm going to demonstrate really quickly what we're going to have uh, links and do here. Very simple move to create space laterally and then attack downhill. Again, we're going to have three different options that he's going to work on going to his strong side. Okay, so here we go. The first piece of it is going to be making sure that we get our accountability piece. Now, if you don't have anything here, you don't have to use it, okay? What we want to do is move laterally this way, okay? So I'm going to get the basketball outside of my right body frame, and I'm going to take a side dribble and shift my body this way, okay? This is going to get my defender moving side to side. So again, I'm going to go lateral here and then attack, one, two, dribble up, okay? So watch me again. Lateral. One, two, into my shot here. One more time. Start the back on here. Lateral, one, two, jump shot there, okay? Lane is going to make about five to ten of these, and then we're going to get into the second option. Lane, are you ready to rock and roll? You want me to go five each way? You want me to just go five? Yeah, go five each way. Five each way. Five each way. Look, I'm going to use my ball. My phone right now. Players out there, you guys can set your tempo. Depending on how fast you're going to go, you can set it to maybe five, four, five, six seconds, okay? Lynx is going to have to put the, uh, the tempo to whatever speed he has out there. If you have a rebounder, then obviously they just have to pass the basketball when you're ready. Good. So Lane's got a really fast pace going here. Obviously, he's a pro. Good. Just like that. Notice. He's creating space laterally every time. Again, what this is going to allow is that defender to shift. When the defender shifts, it gives you an opportunity to either attack downhill or just pull up for the jump shot each time. Consistency catches the basketball, stays low, pushes that ba basketball on the outside of his frame, and then he attacks downhill with a quick pull up every single time. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. So on the second option now, we're going to work on our lateral bound into our quick pull-up. So this time, Langston's done such a fantastic job of laterally creating space, attacking downhill. Now the defender's leaning a little bit. So come game time, any little subtle move that Langston makes, his defender's going to react. Now him being such a great shooter, he's going to be able to pull up and knock down the jump shot with the outside, inside footwork, hezzy pull-up. So... We're going to turn the camera. I'm going to demonstrate a few times, and then Link's going to get back into it again. All right, here we go. So, again, I'm going to have that basketball catch it outside of my frame. I'm going to move laterally here. Now, instead of tacking downhill, we're going to sell it with the outside, inside hesitation and rock into our shot. So I have the basketball, lateral, one, two, into my shot right here. So we're not covering a ton of space. What we're doing is we're getting our defender to give up a little bit of space in between us. Again, I'm here, lateral, 
one, two into my shot. So we want to make sure that we're rocking the defender with our, hip, with our hips and our shoulders. Again, that outside inside footwork is really what's going to confuse a defender. Typically, they're used to that left right going into it. But when I hesitate and I go right left and rise directly into my shot, it's going to have them off balance. Now, again, this is a little bit more challenging and difficult. So younger players, make sure that you're working on your twos before you move back into your threes. All right, Lane, you got that? All right, here we go. Let's rock and roll. So again, get your accountability piece, whatever it is. Make sure you're getting your basketball on the outside of your hip. Side, push that basketball. Side, hezzy, up. Very quick. Side, hezzy, up. Good. The great thing about the machine is it's gonna hold you accountable like he's seeing right now. I absolutely love it. Side, hezzy, pull, good. Every time you get that basketball on the outside of your frame, imagine attacking downhill. Pull. Outside, inside footwork, good. One, two, pull. Excellent job. Catch it, lateral, one, two, shot. Notice again, he doesn't rise until he's getting into his shot each time. He stays at the same level, all right, so that the defender knows he can attack or he can shoot every single time. Good. One, two, pull. Beautiful. Outside, inside. One, two, pull. Let's go. Let's work. Here we go. Good. All right. So, laying on this one, you're going to have to probably slow down the tempo maybe a couple more seconds. So, we're going to get into the third option now. Remember, the first option was a lateral into a downhill one dribble pull up. The second option was a lateral into an outside inside hesitation pull. The third option that we're going to work on is a lateral fall on the outside of our hip. We're going to attack downhill like we did before, but this time instead of going into a one two dribble pull up, we're going to do an exchange behind our back between the legs or crossover and then do one more dribble back towards the middle for the jump shot, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate here again, Lang, you can see it, and for everybody else out there that's following. Here we go. So again, I'm gonna start with the basketball on my hip. I'm going to laterally slide, get my defender moving. I'm going to attack downhill, and as soon as I get downhill, I'm going to exchange behind my back, between my legs, cross over, one dribble back towards the opposite way for the jump shot, okay? So three and behind, one, two, jump shot here. So again, we're here, lateral, attack, behind, one dribble, pull up here. One more time. Lateral, attack down here, exchange, one dribble, pull here. Notice the different change of pace every single time. Lane, you got that? All right, let's rock and roll. You might have to slow your pace down just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. What I'll do is I'll, I'll go uh, one ball, one ball uh, right now. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. So, again, guys, focus on your change of pace, which is huge. You don't have to be the most athletic basketball player in the world to get past your defender or get your shot up. Obviously, Langston's an NBA guy. He's athletic. He's quick. But, again, notice the change of pace. Boom. Every single time. Now, that subtle exchange behind the back or between the legs, that hesitation – is going to make your defender freeze for a second. They may lift up, okay, they may cross their feet, and then when you explode the opposite way, they're going to be off balance. Again, gives you an opportunity to knock down the jump shot, okay? So he's going to catch that basketball each time. Lateral, create space, downhill, between, and exchange the opposite direction. Awesome. I just Every single time. Good. Behind, one, two shot. Good. Now, he's an advanced player. He's adding in almost a step back to that as well. When you get to the next level, whether that's college or NBA, you're going to have to pull a lot of tricks out of your bag. So for young players, if you want to exchange and do one dribble into your pull-up, your pull feel free to do that. If you want to get into maybe a side step or a step back, you can do that as well. Again, challenge yourself as you continue to get better. But notice we're operating in a limited amount of space, but we're also able to knock down a lot of jump shots. 
in that space. Attack opposite, good. Knock it down. Good. Lateral attack between. Good. And not, like, you, like he said, that's one of his favorite moves right there. It's a beautiful move. Attack. Good. Beautiful stuff. Okay, that's awesome. Now, we're going to get into one more shooting drill, and then we're going to wrap it up. One more shooting drill, and then we're going to wrap it up and answer some questions. So for this one, we're going to really work on our pound. So Luke did a fantastic job of having Langston work on his different ball handling into his shot. So what we want to do is challenge Langston in his strength, his shoulders, his arms, to do a couple ball handling moves before he gets into a shot. So Langston, I'm going to demonstrate. We're going to do a double move, but we're going to try to combine the ball manipulation that you did with Luke into our shot, okay? So here we go. So we have our cone at the top of the key. Again, like Luke worked on a lot of side-to-side, north-to-south ball manipulation. So I'm gonna have the basketball in my strong arm. I'm gonna dribble here, dribble over the cone. So I'm gonna manipulate over, come back this way, and now I'm gonna attack down here for my jump shot. One, two, shot here, okay? So again, I have the basketball, manipulate, pull, one, two, into my jump shot here, okay? Ready to go both ways. So now we're combining both our ball handling and our shooting that we worked on. All right, Lane, you got that? You guys ready? All right, all right, here we go. Last drill. Last drill, and then we'll answer some questions for you guys. Again, his feet are going to be stationary on the ball manipulation piece over his water bottle. Again, you can have your shoes there. You can have a cone. You can have whatever you want. Focus is to be able to get that basketball from side to side over that cone or over that uh, water bottle. Tack downhill, good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My bad, guys. <laughs> man, you alive, man? You alive or what? Yeah, no, nah, I knocked over the oh, camera. I love this, man. Hey, this is the awesome thing about going live. Hey, got a little te technical difficulty. We can make that into difficult. a meme, honestly. Yeah, because hey, I just jumped back. I <laughs> thought the ball was going to hit me. I jumped back for a second. So, again, he's going to manipulate that ball over the cone. He's going to attack downhill, knock down the jump shot, reset, and then he'll do that a few reps both ways. All right, you guys ready to rock and roll with us? <laughs> Continue to shout out where you guys are from, man. We've seen some people from Ghana, seen some people from Ireland. It's crazy all over the place. Every state almost, I think, in, in the United States right now is tuning in, which is awesome. Beautiful. Again, notice how every single time he manipulates that basketball back over the cone, he's putting it in his pocket. Okay, I know you guys uh, watch a lot of trainers out here talk about getting that basketball to your pocket so that you can explode and do a lot of different things. If you can get the ball to your pocket, you can explode up for your shot or you can attack downhill uh, for either the dunk or the layup or for the mid-range jump shot like he's doing. Good. One, two, shot. Every single time he's creating space, notice how he gets that ball to his pocket and then he explodes out to the next location. He's covering about two to two yards or so, five to six feet every single time. Now again, we just did a 15 minute ball handling workout with the heavy ball. Right, hand of life. So he's extremely tired. We've already went through a ton of different reps using the machine. So again, if you're out there with a parent, um, try to work your work as hard as you can. Okay, get as many shots up. Lang, how was that for you, my man? Man, that was great. That was great. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. See, am I uh, shooting? Yeah, nah. Hello? So that was great. That was great. Glad to. Uh, yep. So we're, we're gonna take a. Can you guys hear me? So, Ling, um, yeah. we're going to do uh, – yep, I know, you're, I know you're a bit tired here, but I did promise the people out there that you'd give us a minute or two uh, kind of to talk through a few different things. So I have a couple of questions myself for you. And, and um, you know, if, if people want to ask some questions in the comment section, let us know. Um, you know, quickly right off the bat, I, I see uh, Corey Bolden asked what was that last one called. 
Um, there is no particular names for some of the drills that I do. It's just different action, okay? So what we worked on in the last one is kind of ball manipulation over the cone. Again, Langston, uh, talk through situations in the NBA where uh, you're working off of a pick and roll or you have multiple defenders that may come up in, in the small areas and gaps that you have to be able to uh, fit the ball through, whether that's a high dribble, a low dribble, um, a push dribble, you know, exchanging the basketball. Talk a little bit how important it is to be able to manipulate that basketball in those tight situations uh, come game time. Now, manipulating the ball is huge. Uh, being able to put it in small spaces to try to, uh, like, either uh, split the defenders or uh, or trying to get around a, a big man hedging out. So uh, it's huge. It's huge because, especially for me, most most teams want to get the ball out of my hands. Like, they know I can knock down shots either off the dribble, shooting, whatever. So most of the time, they're just trying to get the ball out of my hands. So um, with most teams, if I'm coming off a pin down, uh, they're big or try to hedge um, and try to jump out once I catch the ball. Or um, what they'll try to do is try to blitz me, try to get the ball even, like, uh, get out of my hands faster. So um, for me, trying to split the defenders, try to throw the ball out there or uh, trying to um, – hit the ball right there. There you go. Uh, so, so, for, so, Langston, for you, uh, we had a question pop up. It said, what is your typical uh, routine like for the day as far as working out? So what does a workout day look like for you? Yeah, most of the times uh, for me, I'm uh, getting up early in the morning, uh, doing some type of cardio, just trying to get myself going or, or getting a lift in early in the morning to get myself up and ready. Um, then I get, uh, like normally, I'll be at the gym shooting or something like that, but right now, with quarantine, I just come out here in the backyard shooting. It, it, um, most of the times, I'm on uh, Dr. Dish. So shout out Dr. Dish, man. You guys sending me this, but uh, uh, it's it's huge. I get as many shots as I can up, um, get my rhythm, keeping it as as best I can without ripping and running up and down the court. Um, and, and it's also saving my legs uh, being outside um, and just shooting on my sh machine. And then uh, then I normally take a little break, get some food, and then I'm I'm right back out here uh, shooting or, or doing something to. to uh, kind of pass the day through. Awesome. Um, we know that, you know, you do a lot of work with Luke. Um, you know, talk a little bit about, um, you know, how long it took you to really trust in some of the, the principles and things that he was teaching you. Obviously, there's a ton of uh, trainers out there, a lot of people that are knowledgeable and, and, and high-level guys like yourself sometimes are a little bit, um, you know, uh, nervous about just letting anybody try to help you out with your game. And, and obviously you've been working with Luke and he's done a fantastic job. Talk a little bit about the trust factor between you, you two and, and kind of what it takes for a guy at your level to trust, uh, you know, a trainer like him. Yeah, no, it took some time. We, uh, well, I was first working with Drew Hanlon. Um, he was great. Um, but my, my biggest thing was I had a son and, uh, and then, So uh, me and Luke kind of um, disconnected with, from, from Drew and um, somebody being reliable, um, being resourceful to be able to get to me, um, so that, was, that was huge. Uh, here in, in, uh, in Detroit and then also when I go back home to Louisiana, it's, it's huge. It's huge to have that, that aspect uh, with the trainer being, being reliable and, and dependable. Right. I hear that. Now, somebody just asked a very good question. You know, in the pick and roll situation, pick and roll is huge in the NBA. Uh, you know, when that situation comes up and you have the ball in your hand, what's some of the first things that you observe? Like, what's the first thing that you see when that pick and roll is happening? Is it your first line defender? Is it your second line defender? Is it is it how the the, the big or, you know, the, the defender is hedging? What's your first observation when that situation um, pops up and walk us through that? Uh, from the screener, most of the time I'm not even paying attention to what they're doing. I'm trying to look at is it is there a nail man or is there going to be help at the rim? So once I I kind of like in my mind visualize going past those two guys, I'm already ahead, two steps ahead, trying to see all right, am I going to make a pass? Am I going to finish? Am I going to pull up? Trying to make that next read. And in the NBA, uh, everything moves a lot quicker, and that's why I tell a lot of young guys like. 
Uh, the transition from high school to college is faster. And then once you get from the college ranks, uh, for my case, I went from, to the G League and then to the pros. It's, it, I mean, every level, it kind of uh, – the speed changes, and, and you have to really be able to make those reads a lot faster. So in what situations would you ice a ball screen? So we had somebody just ask that question. So what situations, if you're on defense, would you, um, you know, call ice and ice a, a ball screen? Most of the times when, when they're calling ice, that's on the sidelines. You're trying to push the, push the ball to the baseline or, or just to the sidelines. Um, in the middle, it's normally just strong and weak, um, depending on, the, like, the ball handler. If he's, if he's a dominant strong, uh, left hand, a dominant strong right hand. So uh, ice is always on the sidelines. So we have a lot of kids, too, um, asking questions about, uh, you know, the weather and them not being able to go to, to gyms um, and practice the way that they want to. Maybe they don't have a hoop or a shooting machine at their uh, house. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of what I talk about is self-evaluation, self-awareness of who you are as a basketball player on the court and really understanding your strengths and weaknesses. Talk a little bit about um, how you evaluate yourself as a basketball player, your strengths and weaknesses, and then how that translates in your training? Uh, for me, um, the biggest thing I try to focus on is, all right, how do I better myself from the last season? That's number one. Um, watching film, um, trying to take note on, all right, what did I do great? What did I do good? What did I do average? And what did I do? Uh, what were my weaknesses? And so um, most of the times we try to focus on the strengths, um, trying to uh, – perfect those, and then also, too, uh, once you get a good rhythm and rolling uh, in the summertime or whenever that is, uh, then I try to start working on my weaknesses. Um, last season, uh, my biggest thing was pull-ups. Like, hey, look, I'm shooting 30 40%, uh, probably 30-ish percent from, from pull-ups and, and then finishing as well. So that's what, that was my biggest focus this summer. Like, hey, how can I work on uh, ball handling, getting into the – uh, my jump shots, and then how can I work on finishing at the basket over big, bigger defenders? Uh, so those, those are probably the two main areas that I look at going into the summertime. Uh, and then you, you also said, too, is like if you don't have a gym or anything right now, uh, the biggest thing is just trying to mentally uh, watch a lot of film right now, even if it's not on you, watching the, the greats, like uh, different um, top-tier athletes that, that really make this game look easy. And, and watching those guys and trying to um, work on those moves in, in either in your room, in, in, the, in the backyard, or if you don't have a backyard, the hallway, or, or whatever, whatever you have accessibility to. Um, try to just continue to uh, work on those things because right now uh, this is probably optim optimum time to try to work on those going into the season or uh, if AU ball comes back or whatever uh, you're playing. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I believe in that wholeheartedly. Um, last question for you here, Layson. So uh, I talked to a lot of young players. We have a lot of young players tuning in right now um, that are trying to make it to the NBA. Um, one thing I always talk about is how great every single NBA player is. Uh, typically, they've been the best player at the high school level, uh, maybe the college level. Um, but when they get to the NBA, a lot of times they have to evolve their game a little bit. There's only so many players that can be uh, the quote-unquote alpha male on the team, the guy that is going to be your LeBron James, uh, for example. Um, and everybody else on that team um, has to keep their game at the highest level and also be able to contribute in a unique way. Talk a little bit about um, the roles that you've played on your teams and how you've adjusted um, and been able to stay in the NBA because of it. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you really touched on that. Like, uh, every single level, um, there's always going to be, hey, uh, am I the man of this team? Like, can I be the man? Um, and so, uh, especially at the NBA level, everybody's great. Like, that's what a lot of people fail to realize is, like, NBA players make everything look easy. Um, but, like, when you're up close and personal, like, you, like, courtside or whatever – like, the game, it really isn't easy. It's just that guys are so good, so much more advanced, so uh, intricate when it comes to the, de the details. Like, like you said, the footwork when we started uh, working out, like, our fo footwork is huge. Footwork is huge trying to get by guys. And everybody's doing the same thing, working out all day long, trying to perfect their craft. And so every single level, uh, every person, all four, 450 guys, and even the guys in the, in the G League, like, all those guys are really good. Like, that's what you, you fail to realize is that um, never 
think an NBA player isn't good because of, um, you know, a, a guy missing a jump shot or, or maybe struggling. It's just that some guys kind of can adjust faster and some guys just, I mean, at, at the level that we're playing at, uh, it, it's, it's really difficult. It's really difficult to score at this level, like myself included. Like I was scoring 17 points a game in college. And then now my, my, my career, I've been averaging – around like eight, my average, my career average is like eight or nine a game. So it's like, uh, it's, it's really difficult to score, especially I'm 6'2", 6'3". Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. So you, you really got to be uh, locked in and understanding, hey, look, how can I benefit a team? Because everybody can't score the ball. Everybody can't score the ball on the team. So what's the next best thing? Uh, my biggest thing was defense. How can I affect both ends of the court? So I'm out there knocking out shots but also, too, playing great defense. And that's how I get on the court. I get on the court every single night because of my defense. And then offense, so be it. Like, it, it's going to take care of itself because I, that's how hard I work on the offensive end. But defensively, being the best uh, in shape, um, sacrificing the most. And, and, and that's what – if you look at, like, right now, look at the last dance. Like, not saying that uh, Scottie Pippen wasn't – should should have been paid the highest on the team, but – he was such a great, uh, like, role player compared to Michael Jordan. Like, he, he was able to do it all. Like, he was doing all the intricate parts uh, that a lot of guys didn't want to do. He was a great defender, uh, knocking down shots, and then he moved the ball. He, he was able to pass the ball around. And, and even when Michael Jordan won there those two years, three years, um, the team still was successful. Um, but it's just like, it's not the same. It's like everybody knows their role. And they and they do that to the best of their abilities, and that's what I do. I always make sure I'm I'm impacting the game um, as best I can for my role. Yeah, man, and obviously that shows with the success you've had in your career and the longevity of it as well. So um, again, we definitely appreciate you taking the time. Um, Langston was shooting on our Doctor Dish All Star uh, about a year ago or so. That was our highest level model. Uh, we <laughs> recently launched our Dr. Dish CT, which is the one we showed you earlier with the touch screen. We're going to have to get Langston taken care of as well. Man, and I we need also that. I need that. Our, nice. Yeah. And we also launched our Dr. Dish Home. If, if you guys watching have seen the white one, um, that one's a little bit more affordable for, uh, you know, maybe the average family. Um, and that price is around twenty nine ninety five with, uh, you know, a monthly membership as well. So it's a great machine for those people that are looking for, uh, you know, a chance to get up a ton of shots and it won't break the bank as well. But we definitely appreciate you, Langston, for jumping on. I know we've already talked a little bit about potentially doing this again here in the near future and, and helping people out. Obviously, that's what really matters is, is the, the safe and the healthy uh, health of all the people out there. Uh, we still want people to, to continue to get better every day. And I think that um, this is a great opportunity to show people how they can do it. We worked through a few kinks uh, on our end, I think, earlier today and even while we are going through it. But that's what is beautiful about the game of basketball. You work together as a team. And, again, we really appreciate uh, you taking the time to, to get on here and do this with us. Yeah, now I'm glad to be on here. And um, I'm thankful for all you guys tuning in. And uh, like, like Jefferson said, hey, we, we got some stuff in store. So uh, be, be on the lookout. And, uh, yeah, now if you guys have any more questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'll, I'll make sure I answer those to the best of my abilities. And, uh, hey, shout out to Dr. Dish, man. Appreciate y'all. All right, man. You take care. Hope the family stays healthy, and, and we'll be in contact, my man. Take care. Take care now. All right, bye. That wasn't bad.